Hello guys. So I am Jaydeep Singh Sajdev from Manipal University Jaipur and today I will be demonstrating my minor project in this video. So brain signal analysis is my topic and the my project objective is to provide a brain computer interface to patients having ALS and patients having amputated body parts so that uh, their day to day activities can be drastically simplified. Now, what is ALS? Well, ALS is a very rare neurological disease that involves the nerve cells responsible for controlling and voluntary muscles movement like uh, uh, they can't chew, they can't walk, they, they can't talk. So brain computer interface helps them to uh, simplify these tasks by uh, providing them an interface so that they can control these gadgets, these uh, prosthetic hands, these wheelchair. Now, what is brain computer interface? Well, we all know guys that we control our TV with a remote, right? Now, similarly in brain computer interface, it, it removes that remote and you can directly control that device just by thinking about it. Like for example, you will just think that, okay, change the channel and it will automatically change it. Now brain computer interface can be work with many different technologies. And one of the technologies is EEG, electroencephalogram. Now electroencephalogram is a test that detects electrical activity in your brain using small metal desks. So what we do is that uh, in a subject or in a person, we, uh, he wears an EEG headset. And that EEG headset is just like a normal headset, which now I was wearing, right? So similar to that, and it has electrodes in it. These are metal disks. And these metal disk records the uh, electrical impulses between our uh, in our neurons. So you can see that this person is wearing that uh, headset and uh, you can in the right side, you can see all the electrical readings, all the EEG readings it is recording. Now, how this BCI works? Well, first the person wears the EEG headset. From the EEG headset, uh, we get these EEG signals. These EEG signals are then pre-processed and the feature extraction method is done on that because these signals are very, very light or very less and we cannot detect drastically into that. So we need to provide some feature extraction method and then we provide the classification of it. And uh, when we do the classification, for example, a person is thinking that, okay, move the wheelchair forward. So if we classify that thing, then we can control the wheelchair. Now, EEG headsets uh, follow some 1020 rule, the 1020 system of electrode placement. And you can see that uh, this is a, basically a standard set for all the EEG headsets. Uh, these, uh, so in the figure, you can see that this is the standard. Now we get the EEG signals in a continuous waveform, as you can see. Now we cannot work on this continuous waveform, right? So what we do is, for example, you can see, from zero to 10 seconds, then 10 to 90 seconds. Now from 10 to 90 seconds, event one happened. And then from 90 to 170 seconds, event two happened. So what we are doing is we are extracting this 10 to 90 second wala part. And similarly 90 to 170 second wala part. And we get some small chunks of signals. So when we divide it, so you can see, uh, when we divide it, these are different events. So event one, to, event one is nothing but a steady state, means the person is not doing anything. And event two is a state where a person is moving his hands. He's doing some actions. So what I did is that event two and event three, I have combined and created a class one. And event one is class zero. So class zero means the person is not doing anything. And class ones mean it is doing some hand motions. And this is the data which I got from the Kaggle. Now, the Kaggle, uh, what Kaggle provided? Well, Kaggle provided the epoch, already epoch data. So in the left side, you can see no hand motions. In the right hand, you can see the hand motions are there. So this is the data set which I got from Kaggle. And I will be applying different uh, feature extraction methods, feature cl uh, different classification methods to uh, get the prediction whether the person is doing some hand gestures or not. The EEG signal visualization. Well, uh, what to in order to visualize, so how these signals basically, in order to visualize these signals, what I did was I took all the epochs 
and I uh, in every epoch I took one channel signal. So you can see that rectangular box. So we have 19 channels in this. So I have taken one channel of it and I took the mean of all the channels and what I did, I calculated the visualization of it and it's a very interesting visualization which I want to share. So this is the visualization which I got for every channel. So these they are total two figures you can see. So the first figure uh, in the left side, it denotes a steady state. The person is not doing anything. But in the right side, the person is doing some hand motions. So you can clearly uh, differentiate between them that, OK, the left side, there is no such pattern. But in the right side, you can see a clear pattern, a decrease and an increase. So this we need to predict from our machine learning model. Now, what is the methodology which I have used? Well, the Kaggle data is already epoch as I have shown you. And I, I did the data pre-processing on it. Then I have applied two feature extraction methods, FFT, fast Fourier transform, and CWT, continuous wave transform. And then I have applied, uh, so this CWT is again divided into two things, CWT coefficients and CWT images. And then I applied different classification methods. Now, what is the data pre-processing method? Well, the DC component is uh, in a signal is not desirable. So I have divide, I have uh, removed the mean from it. Then there can be many uh, noises like eye blinks, head movements, and this can contribute a lot of noise in our EEG signals. So in order to remove it, I have uh, re uh, by passing it from high pass and low pass filter of 0.1 Hertz to 90 Hertz. I've also applied a moving average of 10. Now the feature extraction using FFT. So what is FFT? Well, FFT, so you can see that the red signal is the original signal and we can divide this signal into different frequencies. These frequencies are then can be classified into different uh, uh, ranges. So uh, let me talk about ranges. Before that, I applied the, I applied it using NumPy library uh, to compute the FFT of the signal. Now, what I did is once I calculated all the different frequency of the original signal, these signals I classified into four ranges. And these ranges are delta range, theta range, alpha range, and beta range. So delta range varies from one to three hertz, and it says that the person is in deep sleep. The theta range is from four to eight hertz, which means the person is doing some meditation. The alpha range is from nine to 14 hertz, which means the person is relaxed, calm and all. And the beta range is from 15 to 30 hertz. I mean, the person is awake. He's doing some mathematical problem or he's doing some, uh, some work. Now, when I compare the brain signal bands for both the conditions, so in the left side, you can see the steady state. In the right side, you can see the hand motions. So in the left side, you can see uh, they, from left to right, you can see there's an increase in theta and alpha range. Uh, so the scales are different, so you may be confused. So uh, you can see the ranges, uh, the alpha range increased, which means the person was awake when he's doing some hand motions. And that's what gave me a clue that, okay, we can use FFT to classify it. Now, what I did was, so in the left side, you can see this is a one channel data, C3 ka, and I applied the FFT transformation. I got these frequencies, and then I divided into the four ranges. Now these four ranges are then, uh, I calculate the representative value of these signals. So I took mean and standard deviation. So you can see that uh, these features I got for the C3 channel. So C3 delta standard deviation, C3 delta mean, C3 theta standard deviation, C3 theta mean, and so on. So you can see in the right side, we have 19 EEG signals. And 19 into 4, we have four ranges, so 76 signals. And these 76 signals are then again divided into two mean and standard deviation values. And we got around 152 values. And that's why, and we have total 180 epochs. So we have 180 rows and 153 columns means one column for the condition and 152 values, which I just told you. Then when I applied different machine learning algorithms, I got these uh, charts. So I compared logistic regression, KNN, Elite GBM, XGBoost. And when I applied it, I found that XGBoost performed well and logistic regression also performed well because this EEG signal in time frequency domain is a sparse data. And these models, these machine learning models can handle it well. But the other models like random forest, light GBM, KNN are not so good in sparse data. 
that's why i could see that xd boost performed well so these are the other matrices which i followed precision recall f1 score support and accuracy the other method is cwt feature extraction method in this method i applied i basically compared the similarity between the ehd signal and the morlet wave and you can see i have applied this formula using the python library i uh, basically in this algorithm in, in cwt what we do is we compare it by compressing and stretching the morlet wavelet by controlling a and b as the parameters so you can see a and b in the formula we scale those parameters so that it could perfectly fit and in the right side you can see that we have the original signal and when we plot these coefficients we get the scalogram of it and it can actually extract the features of the signal which you can see in the figure now the when once i got the coefficients now these coefficients uh, uh we get around 2 to the powers may we get the features and i i got around 128 features for cwt now you can see that we have 129 columns one for the condition and 128 features and 180 epochs when i applied different machine learning models i found that random forest knn and xzboost were fairly good now this is because this data is continuous and Uh, the eeg signal in a time domain is not sparse that's why these models performed well these are the other matrices like precision recall f1 score support and accuracy i used scalogram so i thought ki okay we can visually see that signals right now let us uh, think about applying convolution neural network so i thought why not to use scalogram images so when i plot the coefficients we can clearly see in the left side it shows the steady state and we can see that the steady state and hand motions are giving a very familiar patterns so that's why uh, what i did was we have 19 eeg channels and how i got these images well scalogram image for one channel in one epoch means for one epoch i have 19 channels right so 19 images and i have 180 epochs means i got 180 cross 19 that is 300 3420 total scalogram images i applied vgg net tens net and res net for cwt scalogram images and this is the accuracy which i got the res net performed well now these are pre trained model pre trained deep learning models these are the different matrices which i used precision recall f1 scores and support in at last i want to conclude that the highest accuracy which we obtained was using fft which i got from 88% and uh, why it was so because of sparse data the highest accuracy from only cwt coefficients was 75% which was using knn and the highest accuracy obtained from scalogram images is 85% using resnet why i use resnet because when i was doing a literature review they use the same cwt pipeline and resnet perform well what is the future scope well the models can further be improved and we can use different optimization algorithms i used uh, i use adam for it now the implementation of a prototype by using eeg headsets for capturing eeg signals and using the methodology to implement it now we can use uh, we can implement we can create a prototype of it that can be a future scope uh, i have compared different eeg headsets and these are the comparison the most viable product which i have found was the eeg headsets of pantech solutions which is which was very cheap and we can calculate we can get the hand motions from it this is my literature review and my findings these are my references so thank you guys for tuning in for my minor project demonstration hope you like it thank you